let's talk explicitly about factors. Now, factors come up in a lot of places in math and the SAT, but you know, we learn this, I, I guess, elementary school or middle school, wherever we learn this, we learn it more explicitly. And then we don't really talk about it as much. It's just kind of assumed that you know it. So let's just review this basic stuff so that if we're ever asked questions about it on the test, we know what these terms mean. So factor, a factor is basically a number that divides into another number without a remainder, AKA equally. So we could find all the factors of some given number. So let's look at 24. What are the numbers that go into 24 equally? And a useful method is to use, I think they call it the rainbow method. We know one goes into 24 because one goes into everything. And one into 24, well, gives us 24. So we also know therefore that 24 goes in. Well, what goes next? Well, how about two? I like to do them in order. So two goes in, two goes into 24 12 times. So that means 12 is a factor. Three can go in, three goes into 24 eight times. So eight is a factor. And four goes into 24 six times, and that looks to be it. So got a little gap here, you can kind of ignore it, but our factors are one, two, three, four, six, eight, 12, and 24. Those are the total numbers of factors for this particular number. Another kind of factoring is prime factorization. And basically it's finding the basic constituents of a number as prime numbers. A prime number we'll talk about in a little bit is a number that only is divisible by one in itself. So we wanna break a number down into those basic parts and that we can't break it down anymore. So let's take the number 36, and I like to use the factor tree here. So pick two numbers that divide into 36. Well, two goes into 36, and it goes in 18 times. Notice two is a prime, I can't do anything, so that branch of the tree stops. 18, though, I can break into two and nine. And nine, I can break into three and three, and there we go. So my prime factorization is two, two, three, three, and we can write it as two times two times three times three. If you multiplied those out, you'd see what equal 18. You'll never be asked really a specific question about finding the, finding the prime factorization, but it's just a useful thing to know. Uh, finally, greatest common factor. This is important for factoring things in algebra, for instance, distributive property, or factoring uh, or simplifying fractions would be another example. Basically, you wanna know what is the greatest factor that two particular numbers have in common. So let's look at two numbers. Let's look at 12 and 18. So, what are the factors of 12? Well, it's one and 12, two and six, and three and four. How about 18? Well, it's one and 18, two and nine, three and six, and that's it. So what is the greatest factor they have in common? Six, six, and six. So we could factor the six out if we had these two in a particular question. We could do various things with this information, but you don't necessarily need to know what this means. You just need to know how to do it and where it would be important.